November is National Lung Cancer Awareness Month and such a pleasure this morning to welcome Dr. Rob Hedrick, a thoracic surgeon at CHI Memorial. And I guess if I could wrap up our conversation earlier, your number one hope when people hear you today is that they realize that you can get screened and have your life saved. Absolutely. Um, lung cancer is, is such a treatable disease, but yet we've been ignoring it for a lot of different reasons. And obviously the, the outcome or the impact is people in the Chattanooga area, certainly in the state of Tennessee, are losing a decade of their life by ignoring this, this disease. There's a stigma attached to it. You still see it. You were telling me that years ago you watched as breast cancer also carried a stigma. That, that no longer is the case. You want that same thing to happen with lung Absolutely. cancer. Absolutely. There, there's a perception amongst, uh, uh, I think, everybody within our country that somehow smokers deserve to die or there's a, a self-inflicted part of this disease. And that's farthest from the truth. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of genetic causes. There's other reasons into it. Certainly smoking has a, a part of it. But um, we're not comfortable talking about it. Um, right. We were the same place with breast cancer in the 80s and 90s, and mm -hmm. now people are very open about it, which leads to more people getting the attention that they should get and saving their lives. Our goal is simply to try to bring lung cancer to that same point. Okay, I want to talk about screenings in a second, but before we go there, let's break it down a little bit. So certainly if you are a smoker, that puts you at a higher risk. Absolutely. However, if you are or have been a smoker, it doesn't have to mean that you can't still take steps to heal. Correct. So uh, the biggest thing is obviously smoking has a, a significant correlation to lung cancer. So that's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. But also there's a lot of other factors. Um, we have a lot of military personnel in our communities. Um, we've had a lot of foundry workers, a lot of hardworking blue collar people that have been exposed to things that make their risk much higher. Um, so it's not just smoking. Um, if you have smoked, it's, it's certainly, and you've quit years ago, that's great. We also know that the farther you've gotten away from tobacco and from the foundries and from a lot of the, the um, inhalation agents, then mm -hmm. your risk actually go down. Well, uh, secondhand smoke, you know, is not good. Studies, however, are still coming in to just how problematic the secondhand smoke can be. Right. Right. It's really hard to put your finger on, and I try to, to steer away from it a little bit mm -hmm. in that certainly it's not great. Um, I think as a state, we've done a great job as far as restaurants and, and public places and trying to eliminate that exposure. Mm -hmm. um, more our focus right now is trying to directly get to those who are at risk for cancer today and tomorrow, and those are the people who are actually smoking. Okay, then let's get into the screening process. If you have been smoking for 30 years, is that right? Well, wow. certainly we call it 30 pack years. Okay. So that's a pack per day for 30 years, or it could be two packs per day for 15 years, or three packs per day for 10 years. Okay. Um, that's, that's the equivalent that puts your risk at the highest level. Okay, and do you, we're seeing here how it mentions people ages 55 to 77. So is that, if you're 50 and you, you're in that category of the 30 pack years, yeah. don't worry about getting screened quite yet? No, um, I still would, would call and certainly seek counseling. Things we look at past just the smoking is your genetic history. Okay. Um, have other members of your family had cancer? Not just lung cancer, but other malignancies or cancers. And you're trying to also look at their work history, their exposure to other um, agents that may increase their risk. As far as the screening, we have to have a starting point, and this okay. is a, a journey that uh, I think is going to take us about a decade to change lung cancer just as we've changed breast cancer. But our starting point is age 55 to 77. Those are the ones who we're going after that we think are the highest risk for developing cancer tomorrow. And to put it into perspective, through the Affordable Care Act, that screening is 100% covered, free. Absol absolutely, both commercial and with Medicare or Medicaid. Um, the, there's no out-of-pocket cost to the, to the individual. And if someone doesn't have insurance, we have grant money to help cover them. This is too important of a, a process to let anybody through or let, let money or economics be a barrier to them getting help. It's not something you want to hear you're diagnosed with. So this, <clears throat> I guess this feeling of denial that a lot of us find ourselves in, it becomes truly a life-threatening problem. Absolutely. And I think the healthcare system, and as a provider myself, we didn't do a good job with this group of patients. One, the treatment was terrible. Um, we lectured to people as if we 
didn't do the same thing. A lot of physicians used to smoke and some still smoke. So we all have the same commonality of, of being human beings. Right. What we've been able to do, and certainly in the last decade, is make the treatment simple. If you just catch it early, it may be four days of radiation and, you, and, and there's simple treatments. You're eating lunch during them. There's, there's very little side effects to an operation where we remove it and you go home the next day. Mm -hmm. You're back playing golf in two or three weeks. There's a lot of simple, inexpensive ways with a very high chance of cure if you can just catch it early. Okay, if somehow you're a little bit symptomatic or you're afraid that you might be, <clears throat> what are some warning signs? Well, the challenge, and this is why lung cancer is our number one cause of cancer deaths in Tennessee and certainly in the Chattanooga area, you don't feel anything. You have no idea it's there. It's sort of the, um, I must be okay because I feel okay. And that's why the screening test is really critical to this group of patients because you don't have a feeling that it's there. Okay. If people call your office, and by the way, you can self-refer to see Dr. Hedrick, um, will they be asked some kind of prompting questions by the folks who answer the phone? Sure. What we're going to do is go through and, and make sure that your risks are in line with getting a screening test done. Okay. Um, and if not, we're going to, going to certainly advise you and counsel you on that. Okay. The biggest thing why we want people to get in and get screened is although smokers always feel that lung cancer is their biggest risk, it's actually other things heart disease, stroke, and it's important to engage them into their health. One, show them they likely don't have lung cancer and start working on that process to eliminate the things that are going to shorten their life. What's well, going to bring a lot of people into you, no doubt, not just your expertise, but the fact that you just said doctors are people too. Absolutely. And we make similar mistakes, so the relatability factor there is huge. Call them at 495-LUNG, that's 495 495- 5864 is the phone number. Again, you can self-refer. Uh, they will ask you lots of questions to find out what's the best course of action for you today. But screening truly does save lives. Dr. Hedrick, thank you so much. You're welcome. We're back after this.